guys, it's Ashton. And it's John. What up, guys? We're back from the reaction video. In today's video, we're going to be reacting to... If it loads. Um, Ahmed Yunus Re Danish Cartoon, CNN International. This is from the channel MPAC Space National. Go and subscribe, guys, if you like this content. This was a suggestion for Rome. Do, 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 do. Matt117, guys. Um, Matt, thank you so much. You guys can also help support our channel. Click on the link down below in the description. You guys are like $10. YouTube can pick when the next video is reactive. Keep it under 10 minutes. Include the video link, title, and your email. With that being said, let's go ahead and get to the video. So, let me get this right before we get into this. Um, MPAC National Director Ahmed Yunus debates Christopher Hatch Hitchens about the Danish newspaper printing cartoons of Prophet Muhammad as a terrorist. Ooh, this is about to get some political religious stuff. Returning now to our top story, the outrage in the Muslim world over caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad. Any depictions of Muhammad are offensive to the faithful. But in many Western nations, freedom of expression is a sacred right as well, including the freedom... That's what the advertisement would have been, but we got YouTube bread, so it just kind of does this instead. ...including the freedom to express offensive ideas. But for some perspective on this, I spoke with columnist and author Christopher Hitchens and Ahmed Yunus with the Muslim Public Affairs Council. This is a debate. They do not pull any punches. And we began by talking about the decision of many media outlets, including CNN, to pixelate the images of Muhammad. Now, I know, as well as you do, that you have not done that in order to avoid sparing the hurt feelings of my uh, fellow guest. You've done it because you're afraid of retaliation and of intimidation. Now, I, I'd like to ask him and anyone else who agrees with him is watching, is that the relationship they want to have with the free press? Because if we have to use this stupid word offensive, those of us who believe in the Enlightenment and the Constitution and the First Amendment are very much offended by this mad, babyish conduct. But we don't go out and kidnap the nearest Muslim we can find and take him hostage till someone apologizes. Okay. We, don't, we don't violate diplomatic immunity. We don't, we don't, which is one of the most precious things in the international community, much more precious than the right of Muslims not to have their feelings hurt. The whole thing is a scandal. And we're all running scared from it. Okay, let's let this Ahmed Yunus, uh, Ahmed, jump, jump in here. I know you want to respond. Yeah, absolutely. This is not about uh, hurt feelings. It's about strategic discourse. Uh, the people that we see on TV strategic are... What? The, well, hold on, Christopher. The people that we see on TV are less than 1% of the Muslim masses. The, the, the gravamen of the discussion here is the vast majority of Muslim moderates that are offended from their role in a post-9-11 and in a, in a conflict-oriented situation, which, which is at the apex of counterterrorism, at the apex of an engagement of a discussion of hearts and minds. Of course, freedom of expression stands, and no one is asking the Danish government to stifle expression. But yes, freedom are. of expression, yes, ho are. hold on, Christopher, freedom of expression and the responsibilities of discussion, the responsibilities of those with power and privilege to ensure that there is comity between different groups, a, a belated response by the government, and then a continuing of republishing and reprinting uh, these cartoons. We have freedom of expression here in the United States, but the president and the major media have chosen not to engage. The Pope believes in freedom of expression, but he has condemned these cartoons. No, it's about okay, strategic cr Christopher, discourse. I want to let Christopher in here. Christopher, I want to I mean, what is this babble? The State Department uh, <laughs> has said that it apologizes and, th and thinks these things are offensive, and it's um, uh, done so without, as far as I know, any permission from the American people to say that, that we uh, take that view. I'm glad to hear you say it's only 1% of the Muslim world that takes this opinion. In that case, why are we treating the leaders of these lynch mobs and, and bullying gangs as if they were representative of your religion? That's a very good question. And why is it that we can't get condemnation so easily, or at all, when, for example, Shia mosques and funeral processions in Iraq are blown up by Muslim fascists. Well, Christopher, the, Isn't the that vast majority, to you? Ahmed Yunus, jump the in. vast majority of Muslims condemn attacks on Shia communities, condemn attacts on Christian communities in name Muslim one, countries. Name one. Conde the Council on American Islamic Relations sent a delegation to <coughs> Iraq to uh, to try to uh, release Jill Carroll. We have done the same with Margaret Hassan. Uh, we engage that's continuously. That's hostage trading. That's we, not, were, that's, we were that's against okay, the Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to jump in here for we don't uh, need both care of you. To do, Christopher, me, we Christopher, don't need hang on. Christopher, I got to jump in here because. 
they're, they're, the point is made here, and this comes up over and over again, this that when we talk about the, the most radical of Muslims, Over they're the ones fight. who get the attention. The whole of the faith gets painted with this brush by the kinds of pictures we're showing today of burning buildings, as awful as it is. Is there a fair point being made here that this this clearly is not representative? Absolutely. And if we look, if we look at, Christopher, please. Um, well, that's for Muslims to decide. If they want to condemn this, they can, but actually a lot of Muslim governments have instead, uh, and authorities, they are have instead joined the condemnation of the cartoons and urged the Danish government to bring pressure on uh, the free press in Denmark. Because it's absolutely they are, outrageous. They are opportunists. State actors and non-state actors that are taking this opportunity to pursue their ends is a different discussion. What we are discussing now is why would we offend the very identity of 1.2 billion people who are needed for us to end this era? Ahmed, no, that's, Ahmed, not the question. Though, why, that's not the why question Why are at all. there anti-Semitic cartoons why do people published on all the time in, in certain Muslim press and Arab press? Let's talk and about the, the anti-Semitic cartoons that sure, are there sure. all the time and you don't see this kind of reaction You're right. from Jews who may be deeply, deeply offended. You're right. We are all offended, not just Jews. We are all offended when there are anti-Semitic cartoons and these dictatorships that use the other to galvanize the bases within their countries to support them in their efforts um, are, are acting contradictory to the interests of Muslims. We condemn that type of anti-Semitic behavior. We condemn it when it's against any other community, be it by Muslims that wasn't like the, the Taliban. Question. That Wait, wasn't on, the question. This is the same Europe that, that what had... You were being asked. This oh, is shit. the same Europe that had a genocide against Muslims, the largest genocide since the Holocaust. We have got to be strategic. We have got to ensure that we are not negligently bolstering the haters that are finding come on, excuses. Come on. Come for on. Okay, Chris, I'm, I'm not Christopher, just a potted, Christopher, I'm not just jump a in. Plant here. I don't, he wasn't asked that question. He was asked, why, when uh, Jewish people or Christians, or, or uh, the largest, in my opinion, the most important uh, uh, group in the world, those of us who don't believe in religion and claim the rights of the Enlightenment, when we're offended, you were asked, why don't we take the occasion to go and set fire to embassies of democratic countries or kidnap civilians that's what you're being asked you're the, still claiming the, you're still claiming muslims have a special right to be offended and that is not. very offensive absolutely indeed not. absolutely not i am claiming that muslims How have dare an, you equal bring up right, in that an equal right to to find human dignity in the way that they are treated in society and christopher if you feel that there is an attack against you, you have the right to respond. That is the same that's freedom what of I'm speech doing that now. you're Thank saying. You. The, the, the Muslims Without around the world... Without your permission, with your Christopher. interruption, the that's Muslims. what I'm doing Okay, now. okay, gentlemen. Time out here for a second. Time Jesus. Out. Uh, Christopher, I want to go back to, to the first point you made, and that is, you know, how newspapers and news organizations make their decisions about this. And you mentioned, you know, CNN's decision to pixelate these. You're right. I mean, partly based on fear of reprisals against our staff, but also partly based on fear of offending. And I, I want to put it to you this way. I mean, do non-Muslims have any obligation, in your view, to be, uh, to, to, to be respectful of this aspect of the Muslim faith and to make an extra effort not to offend? Look, I'm not asking for the right to slaughter a pig in a mosque or to, or to de defecate on a Quran or anything of this kind. I am saying that the religion makes very large claims for itself. Islam claims to, that it is the total solution to all human problems. And this that is sooner, not about Islam. And that the sooner that it's imposed on everyone, the better. Well, that's a point of view. But it can't, if it's going to make such claims, it has to uh, drop the demand that it be immune from criticism and especially from satire. To, yeah. many, to many of us, the claims of the Prophet Muhammad or the, his claim to be a prophet are absurd. Muhammad, and these, uh, that, I, of course we have the right to do that, just as we have the right to represent unchaste nuns and child raping priests and, okay. other, and the other people who also claim a special right because they claim that their own bigotry is divine. Ahmed this Yunus, is why, is this, why this is it so different for the Muslim faith? This is a fabricated discussion. This is, the, the issue here is not the freedom of the West and the uh, isolation of the Muslim world. One of the primary goals of Sharia, as studied in classical discourse, is the protection of the products of the mind and the protection of freedom of speech. That's not what we are addressing. We are not asking anyone to follow Islamic law. No one in the world is saying that there should be uh, an inhibition against this type of speech. But what, what we're saying is those with the ability to move discussions forward for peace, forward for an ability to see each other, they have a More responsibility babble. to act. It is not babble, More Christopher Hitchens. More babble. This is, is not the first babble. time. These types of this cartoons, isn't the first time. These types of cartoons. The religious leader of Islam called for the murder 
uh, in his own name for money of a novelist of living in England who, who wasn't a Muslim. Who is this religious leader of Islam? We are Muslims, sir. We all represent ourselves. Our tradition well, has been clear. Well, the Ayatollah Khomeini, the the Ayatollah tradition, Khomeini doesn't consider, did not consider you okay. as equal, let's say. The tradition of the Prophet is clear. Holy Coming shit, this is getting political beyond our channel. Gentlemen, we have to... I'm too smart to come at this stuff. We have to leave it there, gentlemen. They I claim, appreciate they it. They claim a special right, and they claim it by at gunpoint and by force. No, Christopher, sir, that's, must that's the be, last word, gentlemen. Christopher Hitchens and Ahmed Yunus. Offensive. Both of you, it's been Fancy. spirited, it's been interesting. He's still going on, And it's on, going Jesus. to continue, that, that much is to be sure. Thank you both Thank you for being here. And that again was author Christopher Hitchens and Ahmed Yunus with the Muslim Public Affairs Council in debate for us a short time ago. Well, that's that, guys. Bye. <laughs> that's that, guys. Bye. We're not going to have any prior discussion to anything political. Nope. We're way too smart you for can't, that. can't. Can't. Sorry. But on a serious note. Are you ready? You ready for it? Okay, we can mute it and then we'll tell them everything. Oh my god, that's a great idea. Then if you guys never are lip readers. No. No, um Hitchens, I usually like him, you know, he just he's a pretty smart guy, very well spoken. Um that he's those he was being, I'd say, a little more rude than the other guy. He was over talking oh, of course, him a bit. Yeah. But when it comes down to it too with the freedom of speech, it's a very touchy thing when you get into politics because the freedom of speech is held sacred amongst, the, like, most places in the world now. I mean, it's not just America. Um, but at the same time, there is so much... Oh, what's the word for it? He said post-9-11, which is a good way to put it. They feel like they're under attack always, so they get yeah. extra defensive because they just assume they're going to be attacked because of all that, you know. So it's a very... There's always two sides to every street, guys. There's always two sides. You can go either way. Even if it's one way road, you can still go the other way. There's always two sides to every road. you got to think of that first. But when it comes down to it, it is a product of society, and freedom of speech doesn't need to be upheld. So I understand why they're doing it. But at the same time, it's like, well, yeah, but we all get hated on. We get hated on a ton for doing these videos. You kind of just got to, like shrug it off and just keep trying to get better and do your own thing you know that's what it comes down to the negativity yeah lay to haters everybody's that's what got, you gotta say everybody's got different opinions so yeah. you can't really but you understand you how they fight. feel too yeah you have to kind of yeah because after you post 9 11 like you said it's it's got to turn into a whole different kind of world out there for different religions and whatnot so there's a lot more that goes into it than that but i still think that the values of freedom of speech need to be upheld under all regard or all regards because one of the key factors that makes our society great is being able to say what you want because if you weren't able to say what you want we would just be ruled and never be able to say what we want we'd just be put in our places all the time like little robots puppets or slaves even at that point you know all right. so with that being said guys like comment share and subscribe tell us your comments down below but keep it clean keep it nice keep it good and we'll catch you in the next video peace Bye.